Thanks for staying with us on The Real Story. Our next guest is Danbury Mayor Mark Bow, and good morning to you. Good morning, great to be here. All right, we are gonna talk about the whole John Oliver thing, because it's hysterical. But first, I do wanna talk about more serious news here. Uh, Danbury is in the red alert for Connecticut. Uh, you have rising cases there. Tell us what's going on in the city with COVID-19. Well, we have certainly, yeah, seen an increase over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we had a great summer where we were really down to low single digits, but uh, we're starting to see uh, increases expanding or we're doing our track and trace program. We're seeing uh, people get, picking up the virus at things like churches, small family groups. Actually, we had a gym we, that we just closed down for a couple of days to get a deep clean. These are uh, events that are out there and that are uh, places that people are going that they are uh, picking up um, the virus and we just got to be smart, follow the guidance, wash your hands, make sure you wear a mask and stay away from large groups of people. I asked Mayor Bronin the same question. Are you considering rolling back from phase three to phase two in the city? Right now, no, but I would think that's something we may actually end up answering on Saturday or Sunday, depending on where the next few days of cases go. So now today we had 33 uh, actually, um, as we taped this, it's Thursday night. We yep. had 33 new cases on Thursday. We had 37 on Wednesday. Um, so we're, we're seeing a much uh, elevated amount of cases, and that's concerning to us. But we really want to give it a little bit more time before we make any uh, large decisions like going back to phase two. Phase two would include, uh, you know, less dining. I mean, we're, it's getting um, colder out. I know it's warm today as we're taping Thursday, but is that something that you've had to talk to the business community about, or are you really just keeping that between the health professionals, you and the state at this point? Yeah, we're keeping this between um, our health department, the state of Connecticut. Um, certainly, uh, we always will take input from our business partners, but we, in the end, are, have the responsibility to protect the health, safety, and welfare for our, our residents. Um, you know, it's funny you mentioned that it's getting colder out because we, we just rolled out our BYOB, Bring Your Own Blanket program, uh, to sit outside and eat. And we know that if we roll back uh, uh, from uh, phase three to phase two, that that 25% of uh, people or patrons inside the restaurants is could be devastating to some businesses and we just we just don't want to put anybody out out of business until we, we absolutely are sure that the health safety and welfare of our residents is being jeopardized mayor what keeps you up at night with this i mean that is a concern about the businesses it's really a bad position to be in yeah there's no easy answers to this thing i mean i i think it's the biggest thing that i worry about you know, all night long is COVID fatigue and it's real and I get it. I mean, people just have had enough. They don't want to stay inside. They don't want to wear their mask, um, you know, and that is part of the problem that we're having here and that's causing more transmission of the virus. So the more people don't uh, abide by the guidance, the greater the spread that we have. And uh, at some point it gets to critical mass where it's just a runaway train, um, you know, and that's sure 99% of the people may be fine. Uh, or maybe sick for a few days and then be fine. But you still got that 1%, our seniors, our vulnerable population that it could be devastating to them. And so I, I worry about that. And, and I really try to spend every day putting out the messaging to people to please wear your mask, please stay away from large groups of people, and please wash your hands. There was a little bit of comic relief through all of this, a bright spot that you created over in Danbury. And it was a moment for all of us to laugh and have some fun. And that's your viral feud with uh, Oliver, John Oliver, who is the HBO comedian. So this all started, I was watching the episode where he kind of randomly brings up Danbury and he just starts smashing Danbury. Uh, little did he know that you are quite efficient on social media. And um, we know that you also have snappy responses to things. So tell me when you first watched the episode, what was your reaction? Well, first I was a little confused. I, I didn't get where the, the nexus to Danbury was as it related to the story that they're reporting on. But um, once, uh, you know, he said what he said, you know, it was pretty clear that, hey, game is on. So uh, we literally had a video photographer ready to go the next morning and we had our response done and was in production uh, within 24 hours and out on uh, out on Twitter and on Instagram and, and on Facebook. So um, we knew we had to fire back. Um, we 
weren't sure how that would happen, but uh, we knew also that um, we better be sharp in what we said and be short. So we, I think we accomplished that. I, we all got a good chuckle out of it. And then it just became a back and forth for the next couple of weeks, uh, really going through August and September and culminating here in October. I wanted to play that video, but it sounds like it's not quite ready yet because it is just, it's so funny between the two. So how much money has been raised so far? Because he had said, you know, if you renamed the sewer plant after him and you donated $55,000, um, that he would also come to Danbury. And then we had all these other local organizations that were able to chime in and also donate, which is incredible. So how, what's the count out right now? Uh, we're around 115 to $120,000. We've actually sold almost 10 private tours of the waste treatment plant, our sewer plant. Those private tours will be given by me and they sell for $500 each. Um, so we have a family of three that's coming um, and you get to you know, uh, understand how we process waste. It's, it's quite an interesting tour. So uh, we have people that are buying those things up like hotcakes and 100% of that money goes to uh, our local food pantry to feed people over the holiday season. We wanna make sure that every family in Danbury has a Thanksgiving dinner on their table uh, during that time period. Okay, so the, I, I thought you were joking about the actual tours, like you are actually giving tours of the sewer plant. Oh no, that's real. Yeah, we'll we'll have some up online. We'll we'll actually probably have a, a, a video photographer come around with me to at least do one of them or, or give a snippet of one or to interview some of the people. So we're having fun with that, and um, that's no, that's a real thing. And um, overall, we've raised close again to about one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Our goal is two hundred thousand uh, dollars by Thanksgiving between Thanksgiving and, and uh, the holiday week. That's incredible. Uh, you know, my producer and I were talking, and he was saying that, um, Spencer Brooks, he was saying that the platform where you go and take a picture of the sign, um, he, he was saying, you know, did you guys build that, or is that was that always there? Oh, I know our great public works crew got really got into the spirit of this. They <laughs> built it. Here's the problem, though. We've had to move all that stuff because okay. we for the last three or four days, we've had hundreds of people running around the sewer plant and it's an active construction site so uh, they put themselves in harm's way we've got dangerous chemicals it got really kind of weird the last couple of days so we've had to kind of tighten that up a little bit the sign is in a, a easily accessible location if you want to come down and get your picture taken with it uh, along with the platform eventually we'll have a, a viewing stand once we complete the construction work but it was it's just comical i mean to see people out there running around amongst a sewer plant. Um, you just can't make it up. You can't. How is John Oliver in person? I mean, this happened so much more quickly than I thought it was going to. I know he had said he was going to come. I was like, oh, we'll see him in like five months. And all of a sudden, there he is walking down, you know, in the picture you took of, it looked like he was in a hazmat suit. Um, yeah, tell me what was that was really like. Was. Yeah, you know, great guy. Um, he, uh, we had set this up between my, uh, our team here and his producers. That was the first time that he's left his apartment since the uh, quarantining for COVID began back in March. So he actually picked the Embry to, to sort of have his coming out. Um, and it was no joke. I mean, he was concerned about potentially uh, contracting the virus, but uh, at the end of the day, um, he knew that this was important. So he was just a, a complete gentleman. Uh, we had a great time. We exchanged gifts um, and it was just a lot of fun. Uh, there was another Danbury resident who also get a, got in on the fun. I want uh, us all to watch eight-year-old Caillou Leaf. Watch this. According to my mom, HBO comedian John Oliver, John Oliver threw some shade on what Danbury is to offer. The things you mentioned about Danbury are so yesterday. He is amazing, and he actually got featured on John Oliver's show as well. Uh, and then the governor had even said, you know, kudos to Caillou for uh, standing up for Dan Barry. Have you met him or talked with him? Oh, I know the family very well. Caillou is like... Uh uh, a second cousin or a nephew to me. And so I love the air quotes, by the way. That is the best part of um, of his presentation, amongst all the other things he's done. So he, he's just a, a terrific uh, young guy. And um, he's in the office. He just painted me a beautiful picture uh, a couple weeks ago that I have uh, hung up in my office. So great kid and um, just a lot of fun. I love that he started with, according to my mom, <laughs> He's adorable. All right, uh, Mayor Mark Boughton, it, it's really fun what you did with the sewer plant. It's incredible. We'll have to watch for the uh, tours 
Uh, maybe we'll send a camera down there and follow you around. Absolutely. Um, we would love to do that. So we appreciate your time and thank you for joining us on The Real Story. Thanks, talk soon. Sounds good. All right, that does it for us on The Real Story. If you wanna watch these segments again, you can head to fox61.com or you can download the Fox 61 News app and watch The Real Story every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox 61. Have a great morning.